Well, you want to get onto it straight away, regardless of like whether you're a complete sever, whether you're spinal shock. There's so many different levels to it. There's, it's not like a the most scariest thing about this injury is no matter how similar your injury is to someone else, it's completely different. So even just to bring up Bronte again, his injury and my injury was so similar, like almost you could think it was the same MRI, but we were completely different. Like Bronte's hands were way better, but his legs took a lot longer. Um, his like pain and temperatures were completely different. Where and we can delve into that obviously as we get through it, but. It's, like I said, it's such a scary thing. But if you can have someone that can kind of relate and say, okay, f- start massaging your feet straight away. Start doing this straight away. Just it's small little things, then that can help the outcome of your future. Because like we chatted about last week, you know, you're, you're noticing things still now. Even like the temper regulation, like the pains and stuff like that. You're saying like when you sleep on a pillow now, you need certain pillows. It's like... People just think that a spinal injury is you lose your legs or arms. No one knows about you can't shit no more, you can't piss no more. And, like, not everyone, like, obviously it didn't affect you in that way. I had that at the beginning, yeah, 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 but not not later on. Yeah, and then even, like, my mate Mitch, he he had a really bad spinal injury doing freestyle motocross last year. Um, But his bladder bowel weren't affected, but he lost the use of his legs which luckily, like, not luckily, fortunately now he's got to a point where he can walk with orthotics and stuff like that within a year. Um, but, you know, for me, when I broke my neck, I knew no one. I knew nothing about spinal cord injury. My accident was 2000. We didn't even realistically have good internet back then. So it was a very scary time for so many different reasons. But also I never researched what I my a spinal cord injury I've never wanted to know how bad my injury was or what I wasn't meant to get back because I felt like the more I knew what I shouldn't have or should have the more doors they're going to be for my success for my for my recovery or outcome so I never researched anything I didn't want to know anything because like I was in a room full of people that were negative crying like you know you never sleep I think I've had one full night's sleep in 24 years from my injury and that was two years ago <coughs> so do you, like do you know what what happened that day to then cause that or do you know it was a i had a good joint <laughs> 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 totally legal too it was medicated i actually do have medicated but uh, let's put that out there yeah um no i honestly like even even weed like hasn't really doesn't help me sleep it was just one night i just i don't know i just just had a good night if i knew the answer i'd be doing it every night i Mm. just had one night where i fell asleep and i woke up like a full eight hours like i I normally wake up even if i've had a joint or even if i don't normally i wake up every two hours because i still even as mobile as i am i can't roll in my sleep i actually physically wake up and have to sit up and turn and like it's been like that since day one and that's the thing, like, even when I broke my neck, I had to learn, I had to have people turn me every two hours because you get bed sores. I had catheter, I had to have a nurse stick a finger in my ass every two days to shit. And sometimes I wake up in my own shit, plus then you get the sweats, then you get the phantom pains. Um, I remember I was having a really, really bad first two weeks and I was on all this different medication, but my legs would be dead straight. But because your brain needs messages, it'll make up messages. This is kind of what I've learned, and for myself personally, it doesn't mean it's like this for everyone. But like my my messages would be like, your left leg's over that way, your right leg's over that way. Someone's twisting your fingers backwards and breaking your fingers. Your right knee's been bent in half. So like I was getting insane pain messages because I need that my brain needed that extreme notifications, I guess. Because it didn't, couldn't handle the fact that it had no connection to my feet. So my brain just made up the worst of the worst pain. Like I described to someone that the pain I went through, if you watch a movie and someone's getting tortured and they're getting all the worst shit done to them, that's what I went through. And I had to, ter- I had to teach my brain to be stronger than the pain and to, to overcome that. So I'd speak to the medical staff. I'm like, what painkillers am I on? Because they're not fucking working. So get them off me because 
they're scrambling my brain. And they didn't think I'd survive the first two weeks with no painkillers. So I had one really cool nurse that just said, oh, just for your information, that's the painkiller one. That's not. So you need certain tablets like blood thinners and stuff because otherwise you get blood clots because you can't move. Um, you get bed sores really quick because there's no blood thro- flow through your legs. So you have to be naked all the time on a woolen blanket, a woolen, um, a woolen blanket type thing. Um, How was that on your skin as well, just the wool? My skin actually wasn't too bad. Um, I when I, when I hit the road, um, I don't know how it must have been when I when I landed on my neck and then I bounced. I skimmed the back of my, I skimmed a bunch of skin off the back of my back. Mm. Um, so I only really ever had that, like a hole in my back, and that that came back quite quick. And I feel like the reason why that came back so quick was because I had people working on me straight away. <coughs> um, I mean, it's a rabbit warren just my first two weeks. Like, we could literally talk five hours about what I went through in the first two weeks. But basically what happened was I got my, my chiropractor in. He had to come in as my snowboard coach because he wasn't allowed to be in as a, a chiropractor. So I said, just either look like a manager or look like a snowboard coach. But we basically smuggled him in drew all the curtains around he never did manipulation but what he did was he did touch tests so he'd like touch me on my forehead because that's the only thing I could feel properly and then he touched me on my leg okay I can't feel that and literally for hours he'd just square inch by square inch he'd just touch my head touch my, and then what he'd do is once he found a connection then he'd get a pin wheel so it looks like a spur that's on the back of like a cowboy boot and then he'd roll that and be like, okay, can you feel that? And I'm like, no. And he goes, okay, so you can feel touch sensory, but you can't feel pain sensory there. And he'd get like a hot cloth, but not a burning hot cloth. 